I was quite surprised. And she was off a bit before I was ready, but anyway, gear up, climbing away, looking good. G'day, I'm Phil from PhilTech, and Merry Christmas. I thought to finish the year off, I'd take you on the tour of the factory. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Uh, one of our three axis lathes. Um, we're actually manufacturing the ring gear. That's uh, what it finally looks like. Um, but it's still got to have the teeth cut in it. You can see there's a pile of um, partially machined ones in here. And that's what's going on with this machine. Let's move on. High speed drilling machine. Just for doing finishing work on various parts. Capstan lathe. Uh, German build. 1970 model. Uh, we use this for finishing parts where we may need to to chamfer the edge or do a final drill from the um, opposite side or uh, that sort of thing. Okay, let's have a look over here. We've got the cylindrical grinder. You may have seen this machine on uh, various other videos, but if you haven't, just a quick uh, take you through it on what a cylindrical grinder does. Uh, if I So that's the workhead there that spins. And what we've got in there, it's not actually clamped in, it's got a little collet mechanism there. This part here is a distributor shaft from a Ford Windsor V8. We mass produce um, these parts. They're a uh, aftermarket component. Um, and on this machine, we're just doing the final grind on the spigot here. Um, so, yes, the way it works is you've got a a grinding wheel here, I won't turn that on for safety reasons. Um, this wheel moves, we can operate that manually, it'll drive across and it can grind that cylindrical. It's a uh, manual type of machine, got the digital readout. Um, it's one of the few machines that we haven't gone with full CNC. Um, you can see here box loads of ones that are finished and waiting to be processed. So that's what we do when we're not making model engine parts. Let's uh, move over here. I've got my drawer of uh, measuring gear. So digital calipers. Um, some of them like this are a coolant proof sort, so if you get the oil on them, they don't uh, get all, go faulty. Um, you've got different sorts. This micrometer here is, has got special anvils, if you can see there, for measuring threads. That's a thread micrometer. Um, then we've got your traditional digital micrometer here. Um, let's have a look in the next door. Oh, actually up here, we've got my supersized um, digital 450 millimeter long set of digital calipers. And in here, we've got this type of micrometer. This one is for measuring the pitch circle diameter of your when you're cutting gear teeth like that so uh, lots of very important pieces of equipment that uh, no model engine workshop should be without let's go and have a look at something else Oh, here we've got another machine. This is a uh, one of these vibrating type machines. Uh, sometimes they call them rumblers. Um, you can see there these little porcelain. You can put all different sorts of um, 
uh, media in there medium but um this is a porcelain one for finishing and you might put a bit of uh, polishing powder in there with the water and it can knock all those little sh sharp edges off fiddly parts that are it's a bit hard to get a chamfer tool around and just gives them a nice finish so here we go this is a tool and cutter grinder Australian made quite a few years old but still operational we've never done a video on this machine uh, we use it to maybe make custom make tools this is a broaching tool to machine the hexagonal drive on those Ford Windsor V8 shafts and uh, I won't go into the details how it works but um, a very useful machine around the factory for making tooling let's keep moving got our forklift here you need a forklift to move machines around or unload steel bar Australian made as well let's have a look at what's going on over here actually we're making a more detailed video on this one just for interest sake this one's actually set up to broach the hexagonal can you see that there putting the hexagonal drive on these Ford Cleveland V8 distributor shafts um, so watch out for that video when that comes out just a bit more detail how I go about setting up a lathe okay Sam let's move along you always need machines to cut your bar stock up so we've got your uh, electric bandsaw here for cutting your really big like 150 mil diameter bar stock so if we're cutting up the the blanks for the ring gears which are made out of 90 mil round high tensile bar we would do it in this or we've got our uh, um, cold saw here and this is used to chop up smaller bar stock. Australian made as well. Okay, what have we got here? Actually, take note too, this machine's got the, an automatic bar feeder here so we can feed long lengths of bar stock, like you can see down here. This material here is actually um, waiting to go through the machine to make some pistons and conrods. Here we have a screw press. We use this to uh, insert the ball race bearings into the casing of the engine. And I'll, I'll show you how you do it. We've got a spigoted arbor there that you can load the bearing onto neatly. Then you just pull the lever and in goes the bearing. Simple but an effective way of getting the bearing precisely lined up with the casing. Let's move on to the next machine. This is an interesting part we're making here. This is the casing for the electric starter housing. And it's the front part of the casing. There's a front and there's a rear. What we have here is a three axis machining center. It's a Hercus made in South Australia. We start off with a, uh, a turned blank part of a uh, piece of aluminium that we've um, prepped up. That then is, if I can pull this one off, that is loaded onto there and it can it's got a automatic tool changer it can go through its process and machines out the inside of the part like so then it's flipped over and then it machines the outside of the part so we can from the one fixture here we can get a completed um, component from the 
milling pers perspective. Let's have a look at the next machining centre. Here we have another Hercus machining centre, but this one's a four axis one. It's got this electric rotary table here that if I press the manual button, you can see that it can spin the workpiece um, around while still getting your um, other three axes of movement, your backwards, forwards, your sideways, and your up and down. And of course, you've still got your tool changer. So this fixture here is to make pistons. I'll just rotate it back to its loading position. Wrong direction, that's better. Okay, so what we have here is a turned blank of the piston, that's how it comes off the lathe, and there's a finished milled piston. Can you see that clearly, Sam? So by the time it goes through this machine, it's ending up with gudgeon pin holes that are drilled and reamed, and all the interior um, clearance milled out. It even mills a little bit of clearance on the bottom of the pistons so that they don't clash with the counterbalance on the crankshaft. And we load this part in around that way, and then we wind this handle, and that, it's got a fancy spring-loaded um, clamping mechanism that pushes up against the side of the piston blank. And then we can start operating the machine, and normally I'm just manually turning now. It would uh, drive to this position, come down with the pilot drill that would drill down through there in the bottom uh, for the gudgeon pin. Then it'll ream that hole. Then it would spin back to the horizontal position like that, coming with uh, a tool like this to mill out the interior. Uh, there's a couple of different sizes of end mills there and there you go you're able to do quite a lot of complex uh, machining um, with the one um, set up and machine operation here we have all my manual machinery this is mostly used for uh, making fixtures or prototypes, um, some tooling. So we've got a yeah, standard sort of manual milling machine here. It's got a um, indexable uh, head on it if you want to mill angles. Um, yeah, handy small mill. We've got our manual tooling lathe. It's uh, no, it's, we've got our uh, flexi chuck mounted up there. Just a bit of cross promotion. Uh, this is also a Hercus manufacturer built in South Australia. Uh, you may have started to notice that I like to buy Australian if I can. Well, that covers our uh, manual equipment. Let's move on to the tooling section. Okay, well, here we've got all our, I don't know whether there's hundreds of drawers, there's a lot of them, full of drill bits, uh, tungsten inserts. So, for instance, um, let's have a look at some of these. Here we go. These, can you see that, Sam? They're a small diamond-shaped insert for a turning tool, these are an aluminium profile. Um, we often use the Iscar brand. They're, they're really well made. They're used on the lathe. Uh, we've got, over here we've got thread cutting inserts. They're these weird looking inserts there. So they've got the, the thread form on the top. But of course you've got to get a different tip for every different possible thread so we've got lots of them um, oh now some of these are my favorite ones up here 
I, I love these little tools. Oh, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's a uh, tungsten carbide boring bar miniature one. Very nice. Finally, we've got our engine test bay. Just wheel the safety guard out of the way. At the moment, we're just doing a test on a V-twin. So when we assemble an engine, we run each V-twin as a separate module before we bolt them all together. Well, that completes the tour of the Filtech factory. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, remember to hit the subscribe and the like buttons. Well, that's it for 2025. See you next year.